Christmas friends. Today we are going to work on a most joyous craft. This is something that I do pretty frequently. Not frequently, this is the second time I've done it, but I do it with intention, I guess you could say. And I always enjoy not only the buildup, but the crafting itself, and then the finished product is just incredible. And that is we're going to be making some lip gloss. Not only are we going to be making some lip gloss, from, as far as, you know, like, DIY um, bath products is fun, but there's also a chance to upcycle, and we are upcycling because we are reusing our little EOS friends. I love the way these things look. <laughs> I just think they're so iconic and they're so cute. And I love them. And the thing I like about them the best, probably, is the fact that they are absolutely reusable. So let me get a good example right here. It is possible with just, you see I've done it with this one, with just a little bit of crafting, you can go in and you can actually separate these out. You can separate this bottom part from the part with the threads on it and you can actually reuse these. So that's what we're going to do today. We're gonna take all these apart, I'm gonna show you how I do that, and then we're going to make some new stuff, so excited! Another thing I love about this particular lip balm ingredient is it's only a few recipes, or only a few ingredients. First off, you're gonna need essential oils. We are using peppermints and some tea tree oil. We also are going to need coconut oil. This is a thing of coconut oil I got forever ago. I paid $12 for it at the Amish store. It was, it's still hanging in there. These are the two things I recently got off Amazon. We have some unrefined shea butter and some beeswax pellets. The beeswax pellets are really easy to measure out because they're just pellets. The unrefined shea butter is a bit trickier though. So I'm actually going to melt a lot of this before I use it. You over here, sorry, you gotta see my dirty kitchen there for a second. This is some beeswax, um, I'm sorry, some shea butter that I have left over from previous projects. I'd like to put that shea butter into here though. So we're gonna melt it all to make it all one big conglomeration. It looks like icing, but it's not. But it oh, smells so good. I love the way this stuff smells. So, so to get the shea butter to melt. I just put it in a double broiler. Um, I guess this is technically a double broiler. Basically it's in a glass jar and I set the glass jar in a boiling saucepan, a saucepan full of boiling water. So we're gonna let that boil down until it's all liquid. It's kind of getting there. We just want it to all be one thing because it's gonna make it easier to pour when it comes time. I do want to give a shout out, shout out to the company that I buy these from. I do buy them off Amazon but it's better shea butter and skin foods. I have bought this specific product twice now and I absolutely love it, cannot recommend it enough. It's really great for both a skin moisturizer and if you're gonna be making something. I've made um, conditioner and lotion and lip balm from this and it's all turned out great, so love this company. Okay, okay, so I started to take care of these. I just opened them up and basically separated them. These are ones that I had done previously that are not actual EOS, but just some of my concoctions and I don't want to save the remnants of those, so I'm just going to empty those out and throw them away. This is EOS scrap. This is stuff that's left over from the last batch I did, as well as actual EOS stuff that I've sort of um, like scraped out and put in there. So let's talk about the actual things. I What I did was is that I just went in and I took a knife. Let me see if I can get this situated. So what I'll do is that I will just take the individual little thing and I'll just take a knife and shoop to shave that off. And to get actually to the thing, if you notice, oh, if I drop it. If you notice really, really closely, there is going to be a line that separates, you cannot see this in this image, but there is a line right here that like separates the two pieces. So the best thing to do is just get a knife in there and you can see how it separates like that and carefully, carefully just pop that out. Just like that. So this is the bottom part of it. We're going to set that aside. So then we are left with this piece and you can kind of start to see the way that it looks. So we're just gonna take our knife and go in and carefully separate those. Put that in our scrap. And then we are left with that. We're gonna sort of do the same thing on the other side. Just 
go in and get some excess out because we're going to go in with a toothpick and get all the little slices out of there. So it looks like this now. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go in with a toothpick and we're going to scrape them out individually just like that. Do you, as I just shattered that toothpick, oh wow. <laughs> Just gonna go in and just like that, just punch those through. Now we're gonna put all of this that we have saved, we're gonna scrape it all out and we're gonna stick it in our, as best we can, I didn't get as much as I wanted to. But basically I will clean this out, make sure this is pretty clean. These are some ones that I did before, so that kind of shows you what I'm going for. And we're gonna put it in our scrap, and then we will do that. Okay, okay, we finally got all these cleaned out. Um, some, as you can see, better than others. We also did our one lone little stick guy. So what we're going to do now is that we need to clean all these. And the best way to do that is just to stick these into boiling water for a little while. I am going to put some vinegar in the water as well, just to help with the cleaning a little bit. So I'll go ahead and do that. So if you are, if you are doing this yourself, you do not want to leave these in here long. Um, maybe a minute or two at the most. I also noticed that I was getting some discolorization on some of them, and so I just put the tiniest, tiniest splash of bleach in there as well. So we're gonna go ahead and drain these, get these out, then put them on a towel to dry. Basically, the whole reason is that you want all of the stuff to be removed from these. That's what matters, and you kinda wanna clean the rest of them. So we'll go and get these out and set them to dry. Here we are all cleaned and ready to go. I did go ahead and individually wipe them off because there was a lot of residue left on them and I didn't want to have to deal with that. So here they are. Okay, while we are waiting for our double broiler to come back into existence, we're gonna go ahead and prep our, um, they look like little citrus. <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and prep all of our glosses so that we can get ready for them. So we're just gonna take this one on the end here. And there are three parts. There's the top, the one that we need, we know three of them. There's three parts. There's the bottom that has just nothing in it. There's the top that has this extra little piece of plastic. That plastic is what gives the EOS its kind of stereotypical dome shape. And then we have the little wedge thing. So what we're going to do is we are going to set the wedge into the one with the plastic dome. And you're just going to screw it in just like that. And then we're gonna put it on this like this. We're gonna put it on the bottom one to keep it steady. And then we're just gonna put it into our little, um, I have a little tray that I'm prepping for this. The reason that we do this is because when it comes time, all that we have to do is pour our liquid in here, into here. It'll fill the dome shape. And then as long as we make sure that we fill it past the little wedges, then it's going to hold its shape. And then not only that, but when we go and unbottle, unscrew it for the first time, we're going to get that beautiful EOS shape that we all love. So I'm going to go and get these ready and we have a double boiler. We have a pot starting to boil so we can start mixing ingredients. So this, this is our recipe right here. Um, we went ahead and we put in our scrap from before into this big, nice Pyrex measuring cup, which we will be using. I went ahead and put in my beeswax pellets as well. Um, we are going to be making a double batch, so I did put in three tablespoons of beeswax, and then we're going to do two tablespoons of shea butter, and then four tablespoons of coconut oil, then oils to taste. And we do have those melting over here on the stove, so we're going to add those in next. Okay, we got every, everybody in there, as well as our friendly oils. I put a big splash of peppermint and then a smaller smash of tea tree. So we're gonna give that a couple minutes and let that all boil down and then we'll be able to put it into our containers. It took a hot, hot minute because we had a lot of different stuff to melt, but that is all melted. So we're gonna go ahead and pour it into our containers. Okay, this is sort of a delicate job. But if you're very careful, you can just take your... <sighs> I'm 
we have leftovers for next time. This is probably enough to fill all of these. So next time I won't even have to make anything. I can just use what's left over. Or if I have other containers that I want to use, like say little tins or anything like that, I can just put, just melt that and put it in there. Here these are. We're going to let these set up at room temperature for a little while. Then we're going to move them into the fridge to help them cure. And then we'll unpop, then I will show you guys what to do with them from there. Okay, so, so we are at the end of our little experiment. We have napped, <laughs> we have read a little bit, I ran and did some errands, so now we are going to be finishing up our little containers. So these have been sitting up in the refrigerator for a couple hours now, and as you can see, it's definitely hardened, it's definitely good to go. And if you screwed in your threads tight enough, this next step should be really easy. And that all you're going to do is you're going to match up the little um, divots on the side of these things. So you should be able to match that up. And sometimes you have to finagle them a little bit. But more or less it's just like that. Sometimes it's easier than others. It's not sticking. Okay. Okay, that's not sticking. Anyway, so basically it's in there well enough. So when you open it, you still get that really satisfying EOS thing where you open it and you get the little dome preserved. Let's see if we can get another one that... You may have to finagle it. You may just have to work with it a little bit. Um, but there we go. It will go in there. I promise. So then you open that up, and then there you go. You have your little EOS slip, and God, this smells good. Like it's, it's like EOS lip balm. It's a little bit maybe harder than normal EOS because I feel like EOS is pretty soft. Here's another one. We're just gonna line them up. Just like that. Then screw it, and it's beautiful. I had opened one up a bit earlier than it needed to be opened up, a little earlier, and what happened was that when I put it in, and I put it on, put them together, and then I opened it, and the dome part was stuck actually in the dome, and there was like a break right there. So I just put it back together, and I let it sit, and I came back obviously a couple hours later, and it's... Clearly working just fine just now. Okay. There you go. So like I said, you just kind of have to finagle with it a little bit, try it, but it definitely will do this. And if everything goes according to plan, you will still have that super satisfying little dome there. I will usually keep these. So when I empty one of these, I'll put it in a container that I have in my pantry. This is our little... Um, Bath and Body Works one, and that's pretty, that's pretty self-explanatory. If you didn't have, like I said, I keep these and I'll use these again and again. If you don't have the ability, if you don't want to, you know, pay up front or you just don't like the EOS containers that much, you can just buy a bunch of little containers like this that are empty, or you can upcycle ones you've already got. So just sort of play around with it, make it your own. And then go forth and craft. I should start making that a little slogan of mine. Go forth and craft. So that's all for this little mini-sode, which I'm sure I've not edited or even looked at the clips yet, but I can assume it is not very mini because I don't know how to make something mini. It's, it's just my personality. It's too big and obnoxious for, like, many things, but... That's that. All right. That was a little lopsided, isn't he? Maybe not. I don't know. Anyways, thanks you guys for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye.